Um, I grew up playing with my dad and then I never took a lesson and about 15 years ago I took my first lesson got a little bit better got a little bit better but it's just I didn't take enough and there's band-aids and then have you ever heard of that guy Dalton McCrary how to hit the golf ball as straight as you can point guaranteed uh -uh. All right, to, I bought that site sounds and like a salesman <laughs> he is and the only thing that I think that I really learned from him he said golf is left-handed and I'm like well that makes sense but it, it was a push she said everything's a push so when I first started doing this thing with left-handed, I'm like, man, this is it. But looking now, I was, I was pushing, and then after a year or so, I'm, I got frustrated with that, and I just quit. And then um, about five years ago, I stumbled across your website. I'm like, wait a minute. And it was where well, you were explaining the ref, and I'm like, I have never heard that. <laughs> so I joined your site and <laughs> been working on the drills ever since. And I'm a, I'm a bit contrarian when it comes to golf. I teach very differently. <laughs> But I'm a little contrarian with everything yeah. they tell me. I'm the only one buying AT&T stock right now. <laughs> <laughs> it just got upgraded this morning by Citigroup. Not that I care what the anal analysts say. But last week when the trade true swore thing was announced, you know, and the Dow futures spiked overnight and everybody, you know, we were up 500 points or something, I shorted the S&P, made 30% in two days. So wow. I look at everything differently than everybody else. So. <laughs> you go against the grain. I, I am very much against the grain and march to the beat of my own drums. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Well, let's grab a club and let's see what's going on. Chuck, do you mind if I do a little filming? Not at all. Okay. You and I was going to ask you one other thing. Do yes, you sir. have any type of promotional materials with you? Ah, uh, you know, I don't really promote. I am the worst marketer in the world. Okay. Um, all I have is the website. I just send people okay. there. I don't even have business cards. Don't even have a <laughs> photograph of yourself? Who would want a picture of me? I yeah. No, I mean, if you had any kind of promotional I can, materials, I can, we can get something. I can, I can make something up and send to you. But yeah, okay. I'm, I am the worst marketer in the world. I, I call myself MM, a marketing moron. So it's just, it's not my bag. So. Well, with as many people as you have, from what I looked at on your website, you probably got your hands full anyway. We're pretty busy. Much good. For sure. That's a good thing. All right, Chan, you drug me all the way to Louisiana. <laughs> I better show you something. <laughs> so, I want, so tell me first of all, what's going on with your swing? What do you feel you struggle with? Well, I really feel like I'm, my, string, my, my swing is, I'm confident in it. Um, I can go out there and, uh, you know, hit, keep the ball in play. And, and my, my big miss is a pull to the left. And okay. I know it, it, it's, it's the shoulder. I, I spin and it's probably one out of every 25 swings. And it, it, it's, and I know exactly. It usually happens in the middle of the round because I start gripping, but I immediately know what it is. So I just have to keep getting that out of there. It's been in there so long. Okay. Uh, probably distance is my, I, my my club head speed with the driver is about 95. You know, I average about 230 carry, which isn't too bad. But uh, I, I think I'm just leaving a lot. You're out a there. Lot on the table. Yes. Yeah. You know, you and all anybody should be able to swing triple digits without any problem, no matter how old you are. So I, I think, I mean, you, I'd like for you to take a look at that because sure. I, I should be at least a hundred. I think one time I, I got the swing caddy too, you know, yeah. and I bring it out here every time I come, and I think the highest I've ever gotten is 105. But that was, I felt like I was coming out my britches. Yeah, exactly. So what you're describing is pretty typical. I haven't seen your swing yet, but what, if you're understanding the basics of what creates that pull, your shoulders are opening. When you start ripping your shoulders down from the top, you create too much centripetal force too soon, and that's going to act on the club. You're going to get that resulting centrifugal force. And so the harder you try and turn your shoulders, the more and more you're going to cast the club. Almost everybody, as they're younger, can get away with that to a degree with the irons, especially the shorter irons. Like, oh, I hit my nine iron 135 yards or whatever it is and it's all fine but then you start losing as you go up the gap starts getting shorter and shorter your three iron and four iron go the same if you make solid contact and as you get to the driver everybody caps out because that longer shaft and the, just the feeling that it's a driver when we want to whale on it we just turn those shoulders harder you create that more centripetal force even earlier and you cast the club even more so at first guess that's probably what's going on but let's watch you hit a couple and then we'll grab the driver too okay. and we'll just see what's going on with both
just hit a couple. down the line. All right, now let's take a look here. So, come on over. See that okay? Try to get out of the sun a little bit. All right, let's start with face on first. Setup looks pretty good here. Takeaway looks nice and wide. Not quite as much axis tilt as we want ideally, but here's the bigger picture, right? The club being thrown pretty hard from the top, and so you're losing leg. So if we get that with the driver, mm -hmm. it's just going to be exaggerated, right? So okay. right now, oh, I am losing leg. Mm -hmm. So this angle is widening right yeah, away. Sure. Your wrists look pretty rigid up there. Mm -hmm. Lower body. So one of the things I've talked about in some of these other videos is I look. I like to look at a ratio of hand movement to lower body movement during this transition phase when everything really matters, right? Right. If the transition's off, then right, all bets are off, right? So I want to see your lower body move twice as much as your hands move okay. in, this, in this little span of space. And I want you to tell me what you see. It seems like the club moves first. Yeah, and a lot. Look how much your hands have moved. Mm -hmm. And now compare that to your left knee. Hardly, I'm not getting enough weight shift. Yeah, so you're getting it there, but it's late. Okay. Right? So if you don't move your lower body pretty assertively to start the downswing, and you know you got to add some speed. What else do you have left to move the club? Yeah, your hands. There's no choice, right? right? So that's why a lot of these lessons that you're seeing me doing are focusing on getting the body to initiate everything and move, so that the hands can remain in reserve, and then your hands and wrists can relax. Because if you're if you go to the top and you don't move your lower body to initiate everything, and you know instinctively, subconsciously, your hands and arms are going to take over, you're going to tense up because you're trying to move that club fast. So right. your grip pressure increases, right. which locks your wrists in place, which causes you to cast the club and so on. So it's kind of like a, it's a, a degrading spiral. You're like, you have one little thing that's a little bit off and then everything starts getting out of control. And the right. more you start, you know, the less you use your body, the more bad things are gonna happen from a tension perspective in your arms and hands. So, but otherwise, impact position, release, all that stuff's really, really good. It's, all of this stuff in your swing looks good. Okay. It's the timing and sequencing of it and the use of the lower body that's making this stuff not happen quite the way that we need. Okay. So let's take a quick look down the line. Not too bad there. Not too bad with this. All right, so this is another great angle to look at what's going on when that ratio I'm talking about, and how okay. much your knees and your lower body moves in the same amount of time and how much your hands move. Okay. And you watch and tell me, so you're gonna look at your left knee and your hands. Okay. It's like they're moving at the same time. Well, which one's moving more? Oh, the hands, definitely. Dramatically more. Yes. Probably 10 to 1. For every inch that your knee moves, your hands are moving 10. Okay. Now, granted, they have a lot further to move, but it's the timing that they move. Okay. They need to chill out at the top to give your lower body time to get out of the way. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So, and also, you'll see that your hands are moving straight out in a line toward the ball. Yes. Okay? I have Just draw a line. And that causes shanks sometimes, right? Absolutely. I hit, uh, every now and then, 
because you're throwing the club out at the ball. So yeah. the hosel is just getting closer and closer right. to it, right? So what, in an ideal world, what we're going to get you to do is that your hand should actually travel on a path like this, okay. almost straight down okay. during the transition. And they okay. will, that will happen naturally when you leave with your lower body and okay. relax your arms and hands. Okay. And they're yeah, going out towards the ball. Oh, yes. We're dead. So you, your body has to really chill out, or you would, if you really tried to go after it, it would really start leading more towards the shank there. Okay. You can see at impact, your hips and knees are like dead square. You're like right where you started at a dress, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It looks like you didn't move anything. And so our lower body didn't contribute much. So, okay. as far as the driver goes, we know that's going to be the exact same thing, just more grandiose. Okay. So what we want to do first is get you feeling the lower body to lead. So we're going to change that ratio of 10 inches of movement with your hands and barely any movement with your legs. We're going to we're going to flip that around. Okay. So go to the top for me. And I want you to imagine that I'm going to hold this club up here. How would you get it down if you had to fight me? I'd have to. There you go. I'd have to squat and use my legs. You'd use your leg, yeah. And then from there was is when you would release. Once this did all the heavy lifting, right. get you out of the way. So go to the top again. Use your legs to bring that club down. Left knee, there you go. Post up on that left knee. And that's when you're going to be here. Do it one more time. Nice and slow. All right. So now what I just did there, by you just essentially not trying to throw your hands and come uh -huh. out the ball, your hands look like they drop straight down. You watch guys on tour, you watch Tiger, and during the transition, their arms, instead of going out this way, right. like most amateurs do, right. the good tour pros' hands look like they do this. That's right. The arms okay. are just relaxed, and they're getting ready to fire, but the lower body is getting everything going. So this is just following along, so this is what you're gonna feel. You're gonna go start down, and your hands are gonna be here, and then you're going to release the club. Okay. Does it feel like when I squat, I go right leg, left leg? I like, like to think of it as squatting to square and you're equalizing pressure. So okay. at the top of your swing, you're 80, 85 percent on the right side, right? Okay. Let's go 50, 50. All right. And then keep traveling over to the left. Okay. 50, nice. 50. Yeah. And all the way over to the left and then release. There you go. Good. Well, that's a big difference. There you go. Good. Relax the hands. Again. I'm going to video you doing the drill and we're going to make little corrections as we go. Good. Let's take a look. That one felt oh, pretty shit. good. Knocked all those balls over. Now, look at the difference in your hands. Golly. Your hands just drop, right? Yeah. They're moving at an angle slightly toward the ball, but nothing like they were going like this before. Right. Now they're going to drop down, right under. Oh, wow. And from there, the, hand, the club is right on plane now. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, the club was way out here and slowly trying to drop down. And now, it's right on plane, perfect position. And I kept my hip line. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Now, see how we can see your left pant leg yes. behind your right now? Before, you were like dead square. Yeah. Like Al Guyberger. <laughs> now, you used your lower body to help bring that club down, and the club dropped perfectly on plane, so cool. right into position, and then you can release. So the whole trick to what you just did, and getting your swing, because your swing is really, really good. It's Thank already you. really, really good. But this little transition move, if you don't have that, you'll never swing over 100 miles an hour. It's impossible, okay. right? You just don't have enough muscle mass up here to accelerate the club like that. But just this little move of using your legs and feeling like you're fighting me up here, you've got to use your whole body. That gets That's the dump truck and drag race okay. video, yep. right? I've you watched get, that I don't know how many times. <laughs> well, now, you, now you're experiencing it, right? Okay. Yes. we got to get the tow truck to pull the race car to the racetrack, right? The race car doesn't have enough fuel and it's not made to go on the road. We use the big, heavy, torquey truck to drag it there. And then once the car gets to the racetrack, 
So then we unleash it out of the trailer, right? So that's going to be your thought, your sequencing. So you're patient more from the top with your arms, but you're much more aggressive with your trunk. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. So it should feel like I'm, I'm leaving my arms up here as I'm exactly. as long as I can. That's what it's going to feel like to you. They're obviously going to come down, but you're going to swear that they don't, and you're going to bring them down with your lower body. There you go. Good. I want your legs to really feel like they're alive, but you're using that left leg to help bring the club down. Good. Soften up those hands while you're doing this. One more, just like that. Keep those wrists nice and soft like you just did. It looked great. Oh, buddy. I can tell you're feeling a little, little bit of speed in there, huh? Mm hmm There's some potential here. All right, watch this. You see that? Uh-huh. How much are your hands moving? Not down? at all. They're not moving at all. But look at your lower body, you're loading up that left leg as you're squatting into your activating these muscle fibers and that's what's going to let you to get some zip in there. And your hands, they're naturally down caught. Now look how much more lag you have. Oh my gosh. That's a tour oh, Wow. It doesn't get any better than that. As a matter of fact, I'm done. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. You did everything you needed to do. Positions are perfect, plane is perfect, release is perfect, impact perfect. You just got to get comfortable using your legs. And you want to do this really slow at first. Okay. You're chunking this stuff into your routine. You did it perfect. You're going to go to the top, kind of stop, because you have to think about, all right, should right. I feel this, not right. this? And then that's going to help you bring it halfway down and maybe just hit kind of like little 100 yard line drives. And then once you get comfortable with that, and, you're, and it looks good on camera, and the lower body is leading everything, and it looks exactly like we just did there, because that swing's better than mine. So, <laughs> so that looks perfect. Quite. So once you're comfortable with that, you just make that pause a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, and it just eventually becomes more fluid. You know you need to get that reps in. Right. And obviously you got your iPad out here so you can video every time. If it looks just like what you saw there, that club just kind of floating, it's okay. dropping, that's what drops it on plane. Okay. Allows you to maintain lag, keep your arms in reserve so we can fire them at the bottom. Remember, right. they don't have very much fuel. Right. We want to keep them all the way to here before we start really wailing on Okay. So keep doing it and we're going to work up hitting a few balls. All right. Feel something in there, huh? Yeah. Felt pretty good. Whew. That's scary. <laughs> There's a little different zip in there. I would tell you to narrow your stance just a hair. Okay. It's just going to make that transition move a little bit easier. Whew. Felt pretty good. I bet it did. It looks good. Let's hit a couple. So when you're going to hit balls, you got to do it exactly like what you just did. What okay. your brain is telling you when you're making these practice swings is that's the speed at which you can think and process everything you need to do with your lower body okay. and no faster. Okay. So when you go to hit balls, the mistake that people make is all of a sudden they just forget all the stuff and they go really, really quick. So just like you're doing your practice swings, focus on the movements of your lower body. Good. Okay. And that's going to be your mistake. So you see how your divots have all been up here, mm -hmm. and then that one was way back here, right? Now I know you moved your stance a little bit, but that is way too aggressive use of your arms. Your okay. legs didn't have time to get out of the way. So when you have this big, you know, this squat move, you need time to be able to post up. Whereas before, because your lower body was just kind of sitting here and it was just all arms, you didn't have anywhere else that you had to go. Like now your lower body has to get out of the way because you've got so much more lag coming down that you've got this severe angle that you got to get rid of. Okay. And if you don't post up, you're going to stick it in the dirt. So okay. you've got to get your lower body out of the way first. So what, what did I do on that one? It, it was your, arm, your lower body was trying to get out of the way, but your arms, you started to fire them gotcha. because there was a ball in the way. Gotcha. Like, i got to beat this stupid ball. i got that ball. hit instant. Exactly. We, <laughs> we all do, right? So to overcome that, our brain has to be 110% in our lower body, but our arms still have to chill out like a practice swing. So you want to make five practice swings, do it correct. Good. There you go. See how shallow it was? Because your lower body gave you, some, gave you the space that you need to come into impact. 
see how shallow that is? Mm -hmm. It's a little steep, and you'll feel like maybe a little right arm thrust in there when you take it in the dirt too much. That's when you're being a little too aggressive with pushing the club down, and it's making it travel on a tangent path down still. Okay. You need a little more left side control okay. there. Little body. Okay, watch that right arm. It's pretty deep. That's a nice shallow dinner. Good. Better. Move that ball up in your stance a little bit. You'll notice when you take these practice swings and everything, you don't have the distraction of the ball. Your divot is, is probably two inches further forward than where you have the ball. So you need to move that ball up in your stance because what happens when you make your practice swing, you're fully planted and rotated on this left side, and the vast majority of your weight is on this left side. Okay. When you go to hit balls, because you move the ball back in your stance, you don't quite shift, and so okay. you're still carrying a lot of weight on the back foot at impact. Or so, at, uh, right, right there? Ball. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Well, again, don't do this one. Just set up away from the ball if you're going to make a practice swing, mm -hmm. and see where your divot bottoms up. Let's just see. That is steep with the right arm. Is that the yeah. right arm that's causing that? Yeah. You, you've got to have more time to get out of the way. So your hand, you're just bring, firing that right arm before your lower body's close to that. Okay. Better. That difference is way forward. That's good. Whew. That difference is way up here, right? Mm -hmm. Look where you have the ball. So that's where we want it? Well, you're a little bit open, so if you okay. adjusted, yeah, if you adjusted that, it'd be right about there. Perfect, right there. See where that is? Mm -hmm. That ball is perfect. So it's going to be way further, well, not way further, but maybe like an inch further forward than what you're used to seeing. Right there? Set, go ahead and set up. You could move it back a half inch. Right there is perfect. The shaft should be vertical to dress. Yeah, I wanted to kill it. Yeah, exactly. So you hit way back here, and instead of shifting and getting posted up, you had 50-50 weight. Even in your follow-through, you were back here like this, right? Okay. You have to shift and get forward, okay. just like you do in your practice swing. So this is the, the little things that when you start to go hit balls, ball position is super critical, but let your divot tell you, because you make these great practice swings okay. with all the speed. What you're doing is, one, it's showing you where the club needs to be, where the ball needs to be addressed, but also, you're giving yourself time to finish that lower body movement. When you do that, everything's perfect. Do you think I'm, I'm still? Do you think I'm going too fast? When you go to hit balls, you kind of fall back in your old habits. Okay. So yes, I would slow it way down. Okay. You would do it at the speed that you can do it perfect. And okay. if that means hitting at 10 yards, that's where you start. Yep. There you go. Shift. That's kind of good. There you go. So that's the pace right there. And you break it into chunks like that. It's okay. perfectly fine. All that matters is that you're learning these new movement patterns, right? right? The ball flight of going 50 yards doesn't matter. Right. It's making sure you hit those positions and then you slowly build up the speed to do it. So try a couple like that just at that speed. Okay. See, right that. Ah, do that again. There, yeah, flatten that left foot. Make sure that 80-90% of your weight is on that left foot there. There you go. See, now you're right. Before, the first one when I stopped you, you were like, your right foot was like still totally flat. You had a lot of weight back there. Okay. The second one was a little better, and then the third one was a lot better. Okay. All the way on that left foot. There you go. Good. Better. Now where's your weight? Still yeah. a little bit back there. A little bit, and that's what's gonna make you hit it fat. So you gotta make sure you get all that weight over shifted over to the left. Okay. That was good. Otherwise it's really, really good. 
Did you feel all the sequencing there where your arms are just kind of chilling out? Right. You're really having to concentrate on your lower body. That was almost perfect, wasn't it? It's pretty square divot. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Like I said, your plane and path are really, really good when you do this. So we don't have to worry about that stuff. All you need to worry about is learning to do this with a little white demon in it. That's the only thing that matters <laughs> right now. That's a great right? name for it. Really <laughs> there you go. See how clean, crisp, and shallow they are. Nice. It's perfect. And then I would just put a T like right there while you're practicing here and just keep hitting from the same spot over and over again. I like can you use your legs now. Yeah. Feel awake. They do. So, all you need to do this sequence slowly add, break the chunks into smaller pauses, right? You may have to stop right here, right now, and like, oh, shoot, I'm still 50 50 or I'm not posted up yet. That's why you stop and you go really slow and you break those chunks because you check each position as you come down and then you hit the ball. And then again, you just make those pauses smaller and smaller and then you'll be swinging over 100 miles an hour in a week easily. Really? If you can't do it right now. Right now, I would have you try it. We, well, you can if you want, but all you, you have to get your lower body out of the right. way and use it. If you do that and don't fire your arms on the top, you'll swing over 100 miles an hour right now. But it's a matter of whether or not you can focus enough on this and let your arms chill out. Let me try it. Let's try it. I like it. I like it. So it felt like for the first time I really wasn't doing anything. Good. You know, you what an effortless golf swing. Can't be putting the effort into it. Now everything's the same with the driver All that we same. just did. Everything exactly the same. There you go. 100% focus on your lower body. Leave your arms at the top. Nice. I didn't see the ball, but you look like you got through it pretty quick. <laughs> you know, it felt okay. The club face was open a little bit. Okay. okay. Not worried about the club face. That's the okay. easy stuff to fix. All right. It's the big body movements that are tough. Did that one look better? Look it looked like really it? good. You did great going to the top, and like I saw that you gave yourself time to gather up and get that out of the way. That's perfect. Okay. And really, this is why I was saying like in a week, why the speed will pop up because right now you're having to really concentrate right. on this and it's it's at a conscious level of thought which is really slow we just don't have the processing right. the cpu power at that level right so that's why you've got to ingrain it doing reps so that that becomes quicker yeah right and once we build that's the whole process of this myelinization once you build that pathway and you put that myelin on there it allows electrical impulse to travel faster that's the whole kit see when you started talking about that i, I couldn't agree more because i'm a math teacher okay. as well and I told the kids when I, I've been teaching math for 20 something years, I said the secret to math is you got to do a thousand problems. You got to work a thousand problems. So yeah. don't think you're going to get it after the first try. Yeah. And uh, so when you were explaining the golf swing like that, I'm like, that's exactly right. You <laughs> get, get a thousand small swings in there. And yeah, the, everybody learns movement patterns the same way. This is why golf instruction has failed unilaterally across the board, is because nobody teaches people to learn the golf swing the way the brain actually learns in a movement pattern. If I taught you how to play the guitar, I'm not going to start you off with Beethoven. You're going to be married to had a little lamb. You learn chords and you got to learn the progression. Golf is exactly the same. Why do people think that it bucks the laws of how our brain learns? It doesn't. So what you've got to do is you're just going to keep drilling that and putting your brain right here. Keep getting through there. And then as you get enough repetitions in, you're going to have to think about this less and less because that myelinization is happening. You're building. But that whole process this is what a lot of people don't realize. It takes 100 to 300 reps to build that pathway. And it takes between two to 14 days for your brain to start myelinating 
got pathway. And it only will do that if you keep repeating the exact same movement pattern over and over again. Everybody's a little bit different when it comes to the myelinization. That's why there's this gap of two to 14 days. I might, it might take me 10 days, and it might take you three days, but we gotta deploy these little things called oligodendrocytes that go out and start wrapping the axon of the, the neurons with this myelin. And that's what that fatty sheath insulated it allows the pulse, impulse to travel faster. You can't have, you don't have any control over that. It's like digestion, right? If you had a spicy dinner, maybe you can influence digestion. Maybe it happens faster, maybe it doesn't. But for the most part, it's built into your DNA that you digest food at this rate. Learning is the exact same thing. You have to feed it the right stuff. You've got to keep repeating it. Your brain will start myelinating it. But it does take two to 14 days for that process to happen. So what I always tell people is it's like dieting. If you go and eat a great lunch today, are you going to look any different tomorrow? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Even if you ate 20 cheeseburgers, you're not going to feel very good tomorrow, but you're not going to look any different. You're doing the work today and you're paying it forward to tomorrow. So two to 14 days from now is when your brain is gonna be like, okay, he keeps doing this crap over and over again. I don't know what it is and I don't care, but he keeps feeding me this information over and over again. So I guess he's probably gonna to wanna to do this again in the future. So I might as well get off my lazy butt and start deploying these little legodendrocytes and make them go do some work. And that's what's gonna make me learn. And that's the whole trick to this. And that's why everybody gets discouraged because it, they're not understanding the process. Everybody has to go through the same crap. Tiger Woods, you know, Rory McIlroy, it doesn't matter. Our brain learns movement patterns the same way. It's just a matter of time. Some are faster, some are slower, but it's all the same. So this whole process, you're learning this today. You gotta get this repetition. And I'd go home today and do 100 reps. I will. Just this, learning the post-op, release, all that stuff that we just went over. I got a mirror and a smash bag right there in my bedroom. Drives my wife crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 100 to 300 reps is your goal. Okay. Every day, just try to get 100 reps in more a day. Okay. In 30 days, you own it. Okay. Right? That's 3,000 reps. A little bit every single day is where the payoff is. Coming out here and pounding 5,000 balls a day, completely useless. Right. right. Doesn't help you. If you can do the movement patterns right and hit balls, great. If you're not ready for that, give yourself a couple of days. But you did it fine. Like I said, you were, that's why I said I couldn't care less about the club face or ball okay. flight or whatever. Okay. It's the movement that I care about. Okay. Does it make sense? Yes, absolutely. Any questions for me, sir? Chuck, you, you have helped me so much. I, you give me the love of the game back. I just oh, that's awesome, man. And I will continue to tell my friends and uh, family about it. And uh, so I'm just gonna keep working on this and uh, my short game. And uh, have you heard of Will Robbins' uh, the scoring method? Have you heard of that? It's it's a course management. It doesn't have anything to do with the swing. Okay. And he, uh, I've taken your swing and applied it with his. He, what he does is he breaks the, the game of golf into two phases, entering the scoring zone and down in the scoring zone. And he defines, he says, forget about greens and regulation. That's two pro stats. What I want you to do is get inside the 100-yard mark. Okay, so on a par on a par three, you get one, one stroke to get inside the 100. On a par four, two strokes. Par five, three strokes. If you, and he says, forget about score. He says, if you get inside those on the, put a check, it's going to be a score card. Then from there, you're, the second part of the game starts. Down in the scoring zone, you're going to get down in three or less. If you do that on 18 holes, you'll never score higher than a bogey, and you'll get a 90. And then as you begin to work. So I started taking your swing and his scoring method, and on the, my home course a few weeks ago, I had a putt to break 80, and I'm right there. Yeah. So I'm right there, and uh, but it's made me be a little more stress-free now because now... Good. I'm happy with a bogey. A bogey's a par to me for an, for an amateur, and I'm I'm starting to eliminate the blow up holes because Good. I've always had one one blow up hole. I get an eight. I'll be, yeah, yeah. You know those those kill you. Sure. So, um, but anyway, well now I'll take this and apply that, and you're going to be hitting three wedges into every hole. And you want to worry about that? Awesome. <laughs> Breaking <laughs> I can't eight. Wait. <laughs> I'm going to hit just a couple more. Absolutely. Lower body. Leave the arms up there. Awesome. There you go. Really good. Good. Love it. Good. If you lose your balance, it's really soaked. But typically when you're falling forward like that, force of movement's too hard from the top. Okay.
lower body wasn't posted up. Your lower body is moving this way, right? Your hip, you're pushing your hip back, right. you're using your oblique to rotate your hip back right. and up because the club is moving down right. and out. Right. But if you follow the force of movement, you follow that momentum that the club's already got, you're going to always tip over. Right? Okay. So that's that flagpole video I talked yes. about where yes. you're creating leverage on your body. Yes. So again, that's an indication that your lower body wasn't doing all the work it needed to and your arms took over. Okay. okay. Knob drop down. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. But absolutely. just as a side, when you, when you're working on this stuff, if that happens again, you'll know, okay. Because your tendency, we know, is to not use your lower body, right. just use your arms. Right? Right. So you may see that over and over again. Okay. But just, that just means even more focus on your legs. You get posted up before impact. Okay. All right, brother, man. All right. Thanks so much for the video. I loved it. Yes. Man. I got a lot of comments on you it. You mind if I get a picture with me and you before we leave? No, for sure. 